Before he's dead by dawn, here's a look at the new Mezco Toys Evil Dead 2 Ash Williams 112 Collective figure. Featuring intricate tailored costuming and over 30 points of articulation, Ash includes three alternate heads and a whole slew of cool accessories. To appease the mob, the first thing we're going to do is figure out how tall Ash Williams stands. Stopping the Ultra Megatron right to the very top of his head relaying the information I'm seeing on the screen to you guys. You're looking at a figure that's standing 6.4 inches in height, which in centimeters, 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 you're looking at 16.4, 16.4 centimeters. For a fun little size comparison, just because I have the figure like right here, I just finished having a look at him. Here he is next to Jason Voorhees. Sadly, while it be a case where we never really will see these two combatants in one film, you can check out the mini comics, by the way, that have uh, Freddy vs. Jason versus Ash. But ne never will be a time, unfortunately, where we'll, we'll see these characters in feature film together. At the very least, we can compare them side by side to show you that Jason Voorhees is about the same height as Ash to his right. Now, to Ash's left, he comes included with the same circular display base as the one that came included with Jason Voorhees. I just so happen to have it. It's almost like I had planned all of this. There's a stand on the either side. Now, this one doesn't reflect as much the light as the Evil Dead 2 because it does have the printing on the top there, but I assure you it is the exact same display stand, right down to the fact that it's got the same peg located right at the very top here. So if you want to display ash without the ridiculous display stand neck, I'll talk about that in a second, you can take the two supplied peg holes on the undersides of his feet and just attach it right there. I'm so used to actually having the holes here, just growing up with G.I. Joe, uh, it's so fr uh, strange, not familiar at all to me to have the figure's foot peg further at the front of its feet. But again, you can display the figure probably a little bit more exciting than this. One of the other things you can also do with the figure as well is, of course, he's gonna come with the adjustable neck. Is that too bold of me to say, of course, like you guys already would know that? You can take the adjustable neck, it just pops to the top there, and the easiest way to get it out is just reverse it, flip it around, upside down, all the way around, and uh, take the peg right here. Take that and just sort of force it through until you get the peg pulled out. Don't lose that, whatever you do. And then just pull that out, reverse it, flip it back around, just peg that into place, and you've got yourself an adjustable neck. Truth be told though, the adjustable necks are somewhat still ridiculous. At the very least, I guess Ash Williams, you could probably imagine him leaping a little bit more into the air. <laughs> it's probably such a ridiculous pose. But you could probably have them leaping in the air. I mean, it's, yeah, I mean, you know, you just open that up, clamp it onto his waist, be a little careful of the boomstick holster. And again, you can just attach that into place. And it looks a little ridiculous. So even though it's something that, of course, comes included with the figure, I could never, ever see, at least with a horror variety of characters, unless you have ones that fly. Last time I checked, Ash Williams doesn't fly, so I probably wouldn't never use this particular display stand neck. Instead, I'll, if I can find it, and luckily it's still there, don't lose that, whatever you do, uh, take that little peg, put it back the way it was, what is intended, what it was intended to be, and I would just display the figure standing on top of his display stand instead. Let's run through the figure's accessories, and starting first in a good enough place to start as any, We'll have a look at the Necronomicon Ex Mortis, Naturum De Monto, or loosely translated into the Book of the Dead. Of course, this would be the catalyst, the starting point that would start off both Evil Dead 1 and, of course, the loose reboot uh, Evil Dead 2, in which this figure is based from. The Necronomicon Ex Mortis looks fantastic, and even though it doesn't have anything that you can actually open to it, that's a shame. Uh, it's a nice little representation of the Necronomicon from the films. 
It's got a little bit of a almost a slight sheen to it, reflecting off the bound flesh, both on front and back covers of the book. Even like the stained sheets, the stained pages are a nice little added touch, just kind of give it a sense of aging. Again, I would love if this actually could have opened up. Am I being overly expecting of something that just simply doesn't have to necessarily open? Maybe, I don't know, I don't know. But there's the book nonetheless. Moving along, the figure, of course, does also come included with the sawed-off uh, shotgun, the boomstick, if you will. It's been painted here in gray. The handle, I have to admit, the wood, the brown, I would say, the brown aspects of it, a little on the disappointing side. You kind of wish that they could have done just a little bit more on the extra on the paint side of things. And even though it's not really, again, you know, we'll take, here it is right there, we'll take like the axe. The axe of Jason Voorhees, I just feel like they put a little bit more extra care and detail to it. The boomstick, by contrast, comparing the two, two different franchises, of course, but it does seem like the paint seems lost, like something could have extra been added to the handle portion. Come on, guys, just, just brown. I mean, again, at least it's painted to the credit, at least it's painted, but I would have loved just a little bit extra, a little extra love, just a little extra love put on the handle there. Uh, it does fit into his hand, I'll show you that in a second. It does also fit into his holster, I'll show you that also in a second. What else, what else, what else, what else we have here? Well, also included is a deadite head. That's pretty cool. And to go along with that, also a severed possessed hand. If you feel like you want enough dead things incorporated to ash here, you get both. You'll see that it's flipping the bird. That's splendid. You can see where the dead has sort of made its way into the hand. Discolored, gray, and very much dead. There's the other side of it right there. It is a severed stump, cut off, very crudely cut off, and a nice little accompanying piece. It's not really anything you can, there's no place where you can put either one of these, even like the head, as great as the head is, must say the detailing and the paint is quite nice, quite nice. And there's the severed portion on the underside, but there's really like no place. What am I asking for here? What am I expecting? There's really no place though, nonetheless, where you can actually put the head. It's just, I guess you could just lay it on the display stand. I might just do that, just lay it on the stand. Maybe put the book on the stand as well, I don't know. But uh, there's the head, very cool looking head though, very creepy, love creepy stuff. I'm all about the creepy stuff. Of course, you also get your chainsaw, saturated, saturated would be the best way to describe it, covered in blood. Blood looks natural enough, I mean, it. it it's so simple just to put blood in a red paint on something and call it a day. But blood is meticulous. You have to be careful and think this out when you put blood on anything. Often at times, if you even look at the older figures, blood just simply was red paint. Slapped it on there. That was enough for them back in the day. That was enough for us back in the day. But blood has evolved. And with that, certainly collectibles that are covered and soaked with blood you would hope also gets upgraded as well and i have to say chainsaw does look like it has natural blood on it not that i'm an expert when it comes to blood let's move on let's talk about something else it's a nice discoloration and just age added to the actual uh, chainsaw again of which you could put into his hand yeah 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 i'll show you that i'll show you that in a second i just want to just kind of want to go through all the accessories and then we'll we'll kind of get into the nitty-gritty of Ash here. Comes also with some interchangeable hands. Uh, closed fists, he actually comes with two of them. I just so happen to change out one of them right now for the hand for the boomstick. And he also has like another gripping hand. So, you know, again, you could ideally put the hand in there. I mean, that's that doesn't quite make some, well, I guess it does. I mean, it's the opposing hand. I guess you want to have him holding the hand in his hand. It, does, it seems unsettling the fact that he would be holding the hand, but, um, and then again, you can hold the Necronomicon. I, I actually find that that hand, the opposing hand, not this hand, the other hand in his socket, holds the ne Necronomicon Ex Mortis just a little bit better, but uh, it does come with that as well. So those are pretty much in a nutshell, my friends, uh, the accessories that come included with the figure. Now let's have a look at, why don't we look at the figure, then we'll look at his interchangeable heads. Uh, there's some stuff I wanna talk about, but uh, here we have Ash Williams, from the 112 Collective, from the folks over at Mezco Toys. Oh, 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 by the way, before I forget, of course, you also get the 112 baggie. 
It's like going to the bulk bar and picking out accessories. You can put all your accessories in there. Uh, none of which all the, any of the accessories really aren't as fragile as Jason Voorhees. Maybe the handle portion of the chainsaw. Uh, the blade is thick enough. Still be very careful if you're gonna be putting those in accessory bags. You certainly don't want those breaking. Moving along. As for the figure itself, I have had some time to digest this. I gave it the night, I gave it the morning, I gave it the afternoon, and in the afternoon we are now looking at this figure, so I've had some time to kind of process what my feelings are for this ash. Initially, I will tell you, I didn't like this figure when I got it out of packaging. And I'm still sort of in that same vein, really. Like the head sculpt, I don't like. But I like it more now. Does it look like ash? No, it doesn't. It's a very soft, if I can best describe his head sculpt as soft, but it doesn't really feel defined enough. It certainly, like I said, doesn't really look so much like Ash Williams. It looks like an actor, and I really can't pinpoint what that, what that actor is. It's going to come to me, I'm sure, at some point. But I could certainly say my first guess, even like my first five guesses, if you were to just show me this head sculpt and say, what is the actor you think this is of? I... Of five choices, I don't even think I would even then pick Bruce Campbell. Maybe the cuts would be the giveaway, I don't know. But I really don't feel like it looks like him. As we move away and we look at the rest of his body, of course he's got the tattered, tattered shirt exposing his one bare arm on the one side, still sleeved on the other, still, however, saturated in blood. The rip down the side, or down the side of his torso, where you can see some of the just cuts that have been embedded into his flesh there. I like that it's a little bit discolored and the air brushed around the wound as well just to make it look like it is a wound and not just we just took three lines and put those across his body. Now there are some troubling points to this figure. Of course the head we've already discussed. One of the other big problems I have with this figure is this arm. I would imagine like the arm on this side would be only a carbon copy, mirror copy flipped over to the other side. So the arm on this side would give me the same initial reactions. But I can't look at that arm. Well, I could if I rolled up the sleeve. I'm just not going to do that. But like looking at the arm, the obvious one that's right in front of me, it looks off. Like it's, it, for starters, it's really thin. His forearm is very, very thin versus the, the sizing of his hand. But like when you look at it at certain angles, it doesn't look like it's sculpted right. It doesn't also help that you've got a very narrow area here around the elbow. Naturally, forearms would be broader right past the point of the elbow, but it does look off. I think one of the also big problems I have with, with this figure as well is that there's no defining cut between the bicep and the shoulder muscle. As a result, it kind of makes it look like he's got a saggy muscle. Now again, am I being overly critical? Possibly, but for a figure that is, this was this figure was a hundred and twenty-four dollars and ninety-nine cents. I'm not making that up. That was the price point that was on it when I bought this at the comic book store. So I don't know. You would be expecting something a little bit better than this. I know I certainly would be. But the forearm, the bicep looks like it's shifted. It kind of actually looks like an old man arm. You know, where muscles over time just don't have as much the density uh, as they are when you're certainly younger. Muscles tend to, of course, get a little saggy. And it feels like he's got like a really saggy old man arm. The only giveaway that it doesn't have, it's not an old man arm, is the fact he doesn't have like wrinkles or like markings or anything like that on his arm. But I do find like the arm is very narrow. The rest of his outfit isn't bad. I mean, if you take this away and you change this, this part is actually not that bad at all. Um, one thing that I will say to the credit of Mezco Toys is like their tailoring on their, on their outfits is really actually good. You've got the little blood, the mud splatter. I keep wanting to think blood. There's fair enough blood up at the top there. Here down below though, we don't get as much of the blood, but instead we get the brown mud caked all along the bottom pant-like section. Also his boots are caked in a little bit of the mud as well. The undersoles, not as much though. But he definitely has a fair share of it down the lower leg area. So I really don't have many problems with like the body minus his arm with the body and then the tailoring of this outfit. Now he does have the boomstick um, holster. I do feel like the holster sits really low. It should be shifted a little slightly higher up. 
you can take the boomstick, which we've already discussed, and just before I put that in there for you, what it looks like in his hand. So I'm just gonna, luckily I've already done, I've already swapped out the trigger finger. You can see the trigger fits perfectly. The finger sits perfectly on the trigger and you can hold the boomstick like that. Or, 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 I guess he's posable enough that you could bend the arm and pretend like he's reaching back and pulling out the boomstick. Of course, the ob obviously the next logical step is you can take the boomstick and fit it into the holster. It doesn't feel feel like it fits far enough down. I'll just get that hand back in place. There we go. Get that all back and ready to go. It doesn't seem like the boomstick holster is high enough and the boomstick itself, as far pushed down as it goes, I think everything just kind of seems off aligned here. This should be a little higher up, maybe sticking a little further up this way. I think it sits personally too low. Um, it does have sort of a faux leather look to it. It's a softer plastic that they ended up utilizing here for the holster, but I do feel like it sits way too low. Okay, all right, so I know we kind of picked apart things in a somewhat negative way. We'll look at the various interchangeable head options that he comes included with. This one of, is a little bit more of a bloodier nature. I feel like this one looks better like Bruce than this one right here. If we put the ones side by side, it almost doesn't even seem like it's the same head sculpt. This one I think is a better representation of Ash versus this one right here. Uh, then the other head sculpt, if you want a more possessed Ash, he has this head sculpt here as well. All of them, you'll see, have a very long neck. And when you change out the head, you're immediately treated, just take that right off here, to a very long dumbbell ball joint. Take the new head that you want to swap it out. And you really actually fit the, the neck far down before it actually plugs into the top of the head. Slide it over and just keep pluck, plucking and plopping it in place until eventually it reaches its destination. Uh, the neck is very on the long side, but then once you kind of get it in between the collared section of his shirt, it sort of takes a little bit away from the fact his neck is really, really long. Clearly, this would be my, I say clearly, I'm guess, I'm just assuming you probably think I, I say this is my favorite head sculpt. You would be right. This is by far my favorite head sculpt of the two. There's the other one right there. Yeah, I don't know. This one's not working for me. Ah. Oh. Just thinking, I can't think of the actor. I think he was a SWAT member, or he was part of a SWAT team in a movie. I'm drawing an absolute blank. But I, I think this is a better head sculpt, personally. And then just in case you're wondering, we'll just pop, pop that head off and swap it out with this one. If you want Possessed Ash. Great look, but uh, probably not gonna be my choice for displaying him. It also does have a little hook there, which I failed to mention for hooking on to the chainsaw, which unfortunately doesn't have the retracted cord, so it doesn't actually hook onto there, but just again, and a little added detail, I'm glad that they added that. So we'll revisit the second head option. Where is it, where is it? It's right there. Pop that back into place. Yeah, this one's better. Still doesn't really look like him, but it's far better, in my honest opinion, to this one right here. Let's have a look at this guy's posability, and for that, what I'll do is I'll take the boomstick out. Just I don't need all this extra stuff. And before I actually do that, I can't forget, mustn't forget, take the hand off, take the chainsaw, and what you're just gonna do is just feed, the peg has to stay there, just feed this through, and that just snaps into place. And now you've got the finishing touches, if you ask me, Ash with his chainsaw in hand. And again, you could have the boomstick if you want for the other hand. Probably going to be a way that I'm going to display the figure. There we go. Groovy. And there you can display the figure. And again, you can bring the display stand in if you want as well. Just plank him down onto that peg and you're good to go. Okay, so let's have a look at this guy's posability. I'll keep the, I'll keep the chainsaw in there because I feel like I've neglected putting it into his hand, waiting to the last minute. So for that reason, I'm just going to keep that in place. So for his head, uh, we, we are looking at not one, but two ball joints. There's one there, and then there's one there. Both invisible, both concealed by the neck. You just have to now believe me that it's there. The head rotates all the way around, up and down, back and forth. Good range of motion. The, uh, the arms hinge outward. Both arms, really. I'm just doing it on the one arm here. 
rotates all the way around, hinges up, hinges out, I should say, bend at the elbow, bend, and rotation in the forearm, rotation also in the hand. Upper torso has the ball joint, lower torso also has a ball joint, legs split, forward and back, swivel on the top cut of the leg, you can see it right there, double hinge on the knee, and a good generous amount of posability in the foot, up and down, left and right ankle pivot, and you could, in theory, rotate the feet all the way around. I don't know why you would want to do that, but if you wanted to, the option is there. And there you have Ash, guys, ladies and gentlemen, of the mob. There is your Ash. Uh, I'm not loving it, I have to admit. All the time that I've spent with the figure, generally, when I do reviews of figures like this, I like to spend an extensive amount of time with them. Simply not just pulling them out of packaging, hitting record. Especially with Ash here. When I felt reluctant to want to start hitting that record button, when I was not wanting to hit record right away, I thought to myself, I better sit down a little bit more. Just kind of get my overall ex assessments of this figure. My still takeaway from all of this is, it's not great, but it's not a bad looking Ash. I don't think it looks very much like him. But to be honest, I don't think a lot of the 112 figures look very good when it comes to the accurate uh, portraits of whatever character they're based from. But of the variety, at the very least, if I was to display this figure, which likely, of course, I will be, I will be displaying it with that head sculpt. And not this one, not the one I just dropped. Um, there's also, again, like I said, the option of this one right here, but I think if you want just a definitive Ash, I would be likely inclined to display the 112, the new 112 Evil Dead 2 Ash with the second head sculpt, this head sculpt right here. One thing I think that didn't help this figure either was the fact that I reviewed him right after Jason Voorhees. Jason Voorhees was a really solid effort and outing from Mezco Toys. Just by comparing those two, Ash falls a little flat. Now, nothing against necessarily Ash or Bruce Campbell, but I think it's a lot easier to pull off a Jason Voorhees because he's got prosthetics. To make a monster look like he did in plastic form than he did from the movie, it's a lot easier for companies like Mezco to pull that off. When you have to get a likeness down for an actor or an actress is really where you see the sculpt either succeed or fail. In the case of Ash Williams, though, unfortunately, I feel it's more the latter. I think it falls fail. I think it fails more than it succeeds. To be fair, though, this head sculpt of the three is the best one. Possessed Ash is really a hard comparison, anyways, because we're going back to the idea of prosthetics. But of the two head sculpts of the regular face of Ash, I think the second head sculpt with the blood that we're looking at here in Final Looks is the better of the two. Does it still look like Ash? I don't see it. I see little traces of it, but I don't see a full blown. I don't see full ash in the in the sculpt there. Uh, NECA Toys has certainly pulled it off over their various releases. I guess Mesco, just by comparison, falls like I said a little bit short. But if the smaller variety of figure with tailored costume is really to your fancy, this is a really good looking figure for its size. If you can overlook for the fact that the head sculpt doesn't really quite look like Bruce. Overall, I think it's a decent, decent enough figure. I'm glad I spent a little time as I normally do with these reviews. I don't like to really open up a package and immediately start reviewing the figure. I like to spend maybe a day, a night, just kind of looking at the figure, assessing what I really want to say in the review. I think I needed some time to digest this figure. Not literally, figuratively, because it was I think I had a better perspective of what I think of this figure. Like I said, the head sculpt, I think, misses its mark. But overall, I'm pretty happy with the figure. I'm just not really happy on the price point for $125, which is really what the going rate here in Canada is for the 112 collective figures. I would hope the head sculpt would be a little bit better. And I really don't like the fact he's got a saggy man arm, a saggy old man arm. Overlook those two points. If you did manage to pick up this figure for yourself, let me know down below in the comments section what you think of the new Mezco Toys, Evil Dead 2, Dead by Dawn, Ash Williams. Always like reading your comments down below. Make sure as well, my friends, colleagues, and the mobs alike, make sure you hit that little subscribe button down below because certainly more videos will be coming soon. I don't know. Maybe we may have a look at some more 112 collective figures. For their price point, though, on average, 
I don't usually pick up everything and everything, anything and everything that Mezco Toys is releasing, at least of that variety, just because they're so much more expensive. But let me know down below, guys, what are you thinking of the new Mezco 112 line? Are there some figures that you'd more so pick up over others? Are you just sort of a casual collector like I am? Or are you so more diehard that you're collecting anything and, like I said, everything that Mezco Toys is releasing in 112? Always like having discussions with you guys down below in the comments section. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.